Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa and this is Roma, Olivia, Anna, Kate, Emma, and Abby. Today we will be presenting our school analysis project on the Carmel Clay School District. First, to provide some background information, Carmel is a fast growing and economically thriving city located on the northern Indianapolis border. For those of you who have not been, I would highly recommend it. It is only about a 20 minute drive from Butler's campus, so it's not too far out of the way. Our group had a great time visiting, and we can't wait to talk about it later on in this presentation. Jim Brainerd, the sixth term mayor of Carmel, has pursued a strategy to redevelop the central core of downtown Carmel. Instead of continuing the ongoing suburban sprawl trend, Brainerd turned the city into a sustainable, walkable, and bike-friendly area with almost 200 miles of various trails and paths. He is a firm believer that the quality of life attracts companies, and therefore, he used the arts as a tool for economic development. After learning about Brainerd's attempts to improve the city, we were very excited to pick Carmel as our community to study. Due to this amazing recent development, Carmel has marketed itself as a prosperous city perfect for family. According to the Yahoo article, Carmel is ranked one of the top cities to live in among families, singles, senior citizens, and veterans. Carmel was also ranked as niche by the number one suburb to live in America and the number one best place to live in Indiana. This positive marketing and publicity has led to an influx of people flocking to the suburb to provide the best possible possible opportunities for their families. In addition to being beneficial for families, Carmel is also a desirable place for many companies and employees as well. The downtown area is home to the Arts and Design District, City Center, and Midtown Plaza, all of which are great places for business to develop and expand. Meridian Street, also located in Carmel, has the second largest concentration of office workers in all of Indiana. More than 80 corporate headquarters, including Delta Fawcett, Monster.com, Allegion, and CNO are all located there. Delta Fawcett's company LinkedIn page explains how they are a division of Masco Corporation and is one of the largest U.S. manufacturers of residential and commercial faucets. Delta provides a large number of jobs to many Carmel community members, which helps the town continue to grow. All of these reasons allow Carmel to market itself as a community with low crime rates, a relatively low cost of living, excellent schools, high paying jobs, and amazing community, community amenities, all of which will be further discussed throughout the remainder of our presentation. On to demographics, Carmel is home to 92,918 people, around 45,000 males and 46,000 females. Almost 81% are white, 11% Asian, 3.5 Hispanic, and 2.6 African American. As seen in the images, the most common occupation is named other management, followed by computer specialists and top executives. 63% of the population is married, while 9% are either divorced or separated. Nearly every adult has a high school degree or higher, while almost 75% have at least bachelor's degrees. The average income in 2017 was $109,858, substantially higher than Indiana's average. Their unemployment rate is also lower than the state average. Similar to the income, the home value in Carmel is much higher than the state with more than $200,000 difference. Even the lower end is more than the Indiana average. The higher end can be seen in areas like Durban and Crossfields Drive. Most people tend to live in these areas, especially Foster Grove and Emerald Crest 
The majority of them are toward the west and southern sides of Carmel. Carmel is home to many different religious centers with varying religious beliefs. Carmel is also home to some of the biggest religious centers in Indiana and the Indianapolis area as a whole, which could very well be attributed to the fact that Carmel's population is high in families, and family life often has the desire of having a religious upbringing. Carmel offers numerous amenities from a skate park to water park and offers services from personal fitness to group fitness. The amenities offered in Carmel are unique in that they are inclusive of all age groups and people with all abilities, which continues to build a strong sense of community for the people in the city to enjoy regardless of what makes them different. Carmel Clay Park's slogan is that we believe that everyone should participate in leisure opportunities that allow for performance at the highest level and we encourage participation by all ages and ability. The accessibility of amenities is totally and completely inclusive of the entire Carmel population. They even go so far as to offer specific events to encourage even more inclusion and deepen the sense of community with things like bowling nights and teen night out. Going off the idea of accessibility and opportunity for, par for parks and recreation, Carmel has over 500 acres of parks and trails with about 17 different trails that are accessible to all of Carmel. All in all, it is really easy to find something fun to do and inclusive in Carmel, no matter who is in your group. They, are welcome, they welcome everyone while spreading a strong sense of community and togetherness. In an effort to be inclusive of all people, many of the parks are offering adaptive programs. In addition to these resources, many private companies have taken up in the Carmel District and offer therapy for, therapy for different disabilities. A few which we found notable are the Gray Residential Services, TheraPlay, and Hope Bridge Aut Autism Center. Each of these businesses offers a unique therapy to help better equip their customers. If you're interested in services or looking to volunteer, you can visit their websites. On this slide, we have some data on the number and types of schools which are represented within the Carmel Clay community. Here is a quote from the City of Carmel's website on the business and the atmosphere of the city. Quote, Carmel has redeveloped much of its central core, creating a vibrant, walkable city. This attracts innovative businesses, creative developers, and corporate headquarters that are excited to engage in this thriving community. Carmel's Meridian Street Corridor is home to the second largest com concentration of office workers in the state of Indiana. It is home to more than 80 corporate headquarters, including Delta Fawcett, Monster.com, Allegion, CNO, MISO Energy, Telemon, and Nextgear. A group of individuals from the Carmel community who work to improve the community is the Lions Club. Both locally and throughout the world, they perform service projects and fundraising. Um, they're a service club open to anyone in the community 18 years or older, and they strive to make service opportunities available to those with busy work schedules and family activities. Carmel Lions Club is, was chartered in 1936 by a small group of forward-thinking leaders to serve and improve the Carmel community. The population of Carmel at the time was under 800. The restaurants in Carmel have a good balance of diversity between chain and locally owned. A number of locally owned restaurants which thrive can be found in the art district and they're listed above. So our experience when we actually went to Carmel and went to a restaurant was at Woody's which is one of the locally owned restaurants there and our experience there was amazing because our waitress was 
um, so like open to answering our questions about Carmel and the Woody's restaurant in particular. So Nikki was our waiter and she knows a lot about Butler because she lived like in Tarkington, like the neighborhood, that's what it seemed like. And although she didn't go to Butler, it still inf influenced her life. And she took dance lessons at Jordan Academy, which is actually the Jordan College Annex now. And in, in addition to being a hostess, she also teaches private piano lessons. And she made our meal very enjoyable and informative. And one of the ways she made our meal very informative was like letting us take pictures. And she even showed us like old documents from when Woody's was not a restaurant because it was a library and it has had many other, like it served many other purposes rather than a library and a restaurant. And in the next slide, I will like the slide I'm on now, it is, a uh, breakdown of what it's been in the past. So originally, Woody's Library Restaurant was a library from 1912 to 1970. And after that, it took two years until it became a courthouse. And it was a courthouse from 1972 until 1989. After that, it turned into a thrift store. Um, but that only lasted for nine years. And then finally, it changed to a restaurant which is what it currently is today. Um, branching off into the specifics about um, the school board members who we saw when we went to the meeting, the president is Mike Kirshner, vice president is Katie Browning, secretary Lin Zing, member Pam Knowles, and another member is Layla Spannenberg. And if you want to learn more about Carmel, like they're the school board um, members, the links are actually attached. So you can click on the links and uh, read more about them. But when I did my research about them, it really seemed like they care about the children's education because all of them are parents. And in specific, Mike Kirshner is an attorney at a um, law firm. And he, like, he just seems like someone who would be a good man to be the um, president just because he has so much background in other um, things that don't have to do with education. And then the vice president, um, she does something with a company where she's like organizes stuff it seemed like. So she probably works really close with the president to determine what they want to talk about at the school board meetings. And the secretary, um, she has a lot of foreign knowledge um, and she also um, works at a college in accounting, I believe. And she just does things with fin finance and then Pam Knowles and Layla Spannenberg. Um, I, I know that Pam used to be a teacher, so that's really important, I feel like, for there to be like a teacher um, like on the school board because they like know how schools work. I mean, I'm sure all these people know how schools work because they're on the school board, but she just had a lot of background knowledge about like how the education system worked like in an actual school. So when we went to the school board meeting, the first topics that were talked about were, well, when we first got there, they were recognizing the state champions for the school spelling bee, which was kind of cool to see because there are a lot of like winners from different schools and it, it was nice that they were recognizing them at a public gathering and they received the recognition for winning. And then the public comment, this was the only one from Veronica Worth and she would just, kind of like went at it because she was talking about um, like how she saw the lowering of test scores, lack of time test and sexism and literary works. And in specific, uh, like specifically they had, or the Carmel uh, like school district had omitted the works of Shakespeare, Dante and Homer, like it says on the slide. And she just thought that this was a bad idea for the children to not like read about because um 
the like the reading and like everything that those uh, specific authors wrote, she considered as timeless. And um, the only thing that the school, the teachers were focusing on was the students needing to know about the gender and race. And they weren't focused in on what was actually being written about. And this like has caused the students to hate the great works of Western civilization and uh, Veronica also said like hate each other which is something that I don't fully understand what she meant by that but that is something that was brought up and then the choice uh, versus extreme individualism versus universal truth um, those were two topics that were being discussed as she was talking and then going back to what I said about lack of time test um, the like diverse groups um, were not being represented because of the dwindling of time test. So it was harder to determine like how the diverse groups were performing when the time tests weren't included, I think is what she was trying to get at. So some other things that were discussed at the school board meeting, um, we have listed here, I'm not gonna go over all of it because there's a lot of numbers and titles, but a lot of cosmetic concerns with various schools in the Carmel Clay community were talked about and passed like renovating Carmel High School and Forest Hill. Another thing to take note of is the adoption policy 9150 and by the bylaw of 2102. And then the last few things that they talked about was the um, high ability learner, num learner numbers. And um, so it says here that there was 16,667 total of the student population and that 6,220 were high ability. Um, and the average number, or on average males outnumbered the females in the high ability. And then in this next slide, it's just a bunch of charts that kind of go over um, all different numbers from more of a visual perspective. Um, and it breaks down elementary, middle school, and high school. These are some of the educational centers in Carmel. As arts have a huge influence, the Center of Performing Arts and Museum of Miniature Houses are quite popular. Other common locations are the Carmel Clay Public Library and the Kumon Tutoring Center. Carmel Elementary mission statement is as follows. The Carmel Elementary School community is committed to providing challenging educational opportunities that build positive attitudes toward lifelong learning. It is one of three Title I schools in the district. There are about 590 students that attend this elementary school currently. And of those 590 students, over 100 of those students receive additional tutoring or small group help. Carmel Elementary has a separate slogan or mission statement for their curriculum saying, curriculum is designed to foster the highest academic achievement for all students. The curriculum is regularly evaluated and revised through formal program evaluation to support our district's vision, experience ex excellence, explore opportunities and realize potential. Some of the special programs that were seen on the previous slide are English as a new language, high ability, special education, and Title I. Carmel Elementary also uniquely draws special attention to their youngest grade, kindergarten, saying that they recognize that a number of factors contribute to a successful kindergarten experience, social and emotional well-being, language skills, and ability to solve problem, problems and think creatively, general knowledge about the world, and physical health.
Here's a little bit about student life at Carmel Elementary School. 4% of the students are eligible for reduced lunch, while 11% of the students are eligible for free lunch. Um, the ranking of Carmel Elementary School is 102 out of 7,459, meaning that it falls in the top 10%. Top 10 this ranking is based on a combined math and reading proficiency test score that is designated by Indiana and in its state tests. So my school is Forestdale Elementary and it is a place for young minds to experience excellence, explore opportunities and realize potential. It was opened in 1980 um, the school has grown in population and currently boasts approximately 689 students with 80 educators. Um, Forestdale is a Title I school and hosts one of the three early childhood programs within the Carmel Clay District. The benefits that federal money provides in, ex in excelling students' education works to combat boundaries which are inhib inhibiting students' ability to perform to state standards. Some students who qualify include migrant children, homeless children, students with different abilities, and those who are just struggling with grasping content. Um, Title I has helped Forestdale advocate for their students by providing access to professional development, teacher training, and parental involvement activities. Without resources like these, many students would fall through the cracks. Um, Forestdale also offer, offers special education services and um, it offers these programs for ages three through 21 in the most, uh, in the least restrictive environment. So um, on this next slide, I have just some pictures um, taken from the website, which I think show just the community and the atmosphere at Forestdale. Um, as for the school itself, the bright classrooms, up-to-date technology, and spacious playground offers chances for students to interact and engage with their peers while also learning valuable lessons. Students are also given appropriate resources for whatever stage they are in in their educational journey. Um, Forestdale offers programs like English as, English as a New Language, High Ability, and Special Education. Um, outside of the classroom, students are given opportunities to participate in academic competitions, health and wellness programs, and give back to local communities through service work. Forestdale also has a very supportive and hands-on PTO, which provides funding for things like teacher appreciation, school spirit wear, and class field trips. So Cherry Tree Elementary is a public elementary school. It has 706 students and it's ranked 36 um, out of 1,031 Indiana elementary schools, which I thought was really important in talking about how much Carmel has grown um, as a community over time. As you can see from the chart up in the corner, it is um, primarily white students and then um, 6.4% Asian is the next um, highest. As far as curriculum goes, they have programs such as English as a New Language, High Ability, and Special Education programs that are set into place. They also have 10 extracurricular clubs and activities that um, the majority of them are um, connected back to the Monon Community Center, which just shows how involved they are within the community. The mission statement of Cherry Tree um, is as follows. The mission of Cherry Tree is to nurture and challenge children as they become inspired lifelong learners and productive, impactful, kind, and engaged citizens. I really wanted to see how they implemented their mission statement. And so what I did was I followed um, their Instagram page along with three teachers and um, the parents' Instagram page. And over time, I would see them post different things and you could really tell that they are um, very dedicated to inspiring productive young children of society in hopes that when they grow up, they stay in the Carmel area and continue to give back to the community they grew up in. The 
school I chose to study was West Clay Elementary School. There are 766 students and 37 teachers at West Clay, which is equivalent to about a 20 to 1 student to teacher ratio. The students are predominantly white, but there is quite a bit of diversity compared to the Carmel community, as you can see this pie, in this pie chart. Approximately 3.3% of West Clay students receive free or reduced lunches, and with an average standard score of 95.37%, this ranks West Clay 12th out of over 1,000 Indiana elementary schools. The school also offers special service programs such as special education and English as a new language. Students also have opportunities to participate in extracurriculars such as yearbook club and volunteering in the community. That being said, I think West Clay does an excellent job adhering to their mission statement. The school claims they are dedicated to fostering an environment that promotes education and well-being, regardless of ability, age, appearance, gender, nationality, race, religion, sexual orientation, and socioeconomic status. This statement embodies Horace Mann's philosophy of equal opportunity of education by having the school's teachers, administrators, and facilitators all advocate for advancing their students' learning abilities, no matter the circumstances. Carmel Clay Middle School is home to 1,312 students in grades 6 through 8. With a 19 to 1 student teacher ratio, 34 different countries are represented. In addition to teachers, there are two counselors, two social workers, one nurse, one media specialist, one instructional coach, and more than 25 support staff. Through this, it is clear that the students and teachers have access to numerous resources. As only 10.6% of the student population receives free or reduced lunch, Clay Middle School was ranked 10th, in, 10th best in Indiana Public Middle Schools. In relation to the students, they have an abundance of activities outside of academics. To name a few, they offer chess club, band, Star Wars club, friendship bracelet making, and many more. As the students are being supported in both academics and extracurriculars, 75.8% of the student population passed the I-STEP test. The majority of their students excel in math and English slash reading. In terms of curriculum, Clay Middle School offers special education and high ability classes. There is not a specific course of AB, IB, or dual credit. So the high school that I, well, the school in Carmel that I decided to research was Carmel High School. And Carmel High School serves more than 5,000 students and 71% of students are achieving proficiency in math and 86% of students are achieving proficiency in reading. And Carmel High School placed in the top 20% of all schools in Indiana for overall test scores. And their student to teacher ratio is 18 to one, which I think is a good ratio because um, there are enough teachers to accommodate how big Carmel High School is. Um, the minority enrollment is 24%, which is lower than Indiana's average. And the teacher population is actually 278, which has actually grown by 10% over um, five years, which makes sense because Carmel High School itself has grown in student population. Uh, the female to male ratio is 52 to 48, and the graduation rate is 97%. So a few of the things I'd like to point out about Carmel High School is that it received the Blue Ribbon Award in 2004, which is a high achievement for any school to receive. And I think in the last slide, no, I didn't say that in the last slide. Um, uh, it ranks 209 out of uh, 1,769 schools. So um, I think that's really great that Carmel is so highly ranked out of that many schools. 
So some things about the student life and just things that students are doing. Um, 6% are eligible for free lunch and 2% are um, eligible for reduced lunch, which is uh, substantially lower than Indiana's average. And um, some extra extracurricular activities that the students can participate in are clubs, athletics, band, choir, orchestra, theater department, visual arts, intramurals, and student government. And if you're interested in learning any more, I attached links to the specific pages. Um, they provide a lot of clubs, so I didn't really feel like adding all of them because there's just too many. But they have like the typical like science clubs and then language clubs. And they have most of the athletics, if not more than a lot of high schools do. So moving on to the classes that Carmel High School offers, um, there are AP classes, IB diplomas, and dual credit classes, which are taken through Ivy Tech, Butler, don't know how to say that, and Indiana University. And then uh, some of the additional programs that they offer are advancement via individual determination which I've only seen at one of the other schools that we visited in AD um, 199. And then they also offer ENL program uh, and special education, which is in the least restrictive environment. So the students who need to have a little bit extra help are also engaged with uh, other classmates that, um, you would see in any class. So I think that's great because they need that involvement to mature and just have that connection with everyone that's there. Um, is that it guys? Yep, so here are our resources and we just want to thank everyone for listening to our school analysis project on the Carmel Clay School District.